I'm just gonna give folks a few minutes to come in from the waiting room. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. As a reminder, please mute yourself when you enter unless you are appearing or testifying before the board. That's me and I'm appearing. Wonderful, <laughs> thank you. Good morning. This is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021. Today's hearing is being held pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. Today's hearing will be recorded and posted to the city of Boston website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Good morning, my name is Kathleen Joyce. I'm chair of the Boston Licensing Board and today I am joined by Commissioner Curran. Um, we will be joined shortly, I believe, by Commissioner Saxon. Thank you. As a reminder, please mute yourself at all times unless you are actively appearing or testifying before the board and please ensure that your audios and visuals are working properly. I will call each item in the order that it appears on the agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the licensee. You will then make a brief presentation regarding your proposal, followed by questions by the chairwoman and commissioners. Following the questions, there will be testimony beginning with elected officials or their representatives. To sign up as a member of the public to testify on a particular agenda item, please sign up using the chat function when that item number is called by typing your name, address, and affiliation, if any. You will be called in the order that you have signed up. Please limit your testimony to two minutes if you exceed two minutes, you will be muted. Now calling item number one, Old Colony Yacht Club doing business as OCYC, located at 235 Victory Road in Dorchester. Has applied for a common vitular license to be exercised on the above in a whole of said building except basement. Capacity breakdown, first floor 134, second floor 220. Manager, Johnny English, hours of operation, 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Richard Ruffini, I'm the Commodore, also known as the president. Great, please go ahead. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're applying for um, a permanent common Victorola's license. Um, I took office in um, 2020. Um, and um, in June, um, I uh, found out that the club didn't have a common Victorola's license. Um, at the time, um, the governor had requested, uh, had allowed us to create a temporary license as part of um, COVID uh, precautions. Um, uh, we, we applied for and was granted that temporary license. Um, and, and now it is our intention to um, apply for and, and to keep a, a permanent common patrol license. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ruffini, and we're happy to be able to work with you on this to get the license to reflect the business operations there. Um, I don't have any questions, and I see we're joined by Commissioner Saxon. Um, does Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon have any questions for the CV application? I do not. Thank you. Great. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or the representatives? Yes. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. George Wynn with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant has contacted all neighboring civic associations and there were no concerns. So at this time, our office would like to go on record and support. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Now calling item two, HM Boston LLC, doing business as Bistro du Midi, 272 Boylston Street, holder of a common vitular seven day all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Randolph Clutter to Michael Sesnick, attorney Thomas Miller. Attorney Miller. Good morning, um, Madam Chair, Commissioners, Mr. Secretary, uh, Tom Miller, McDermott, Quilty and Miller uh, on behalf of the licensee. Uh, we're here before you, as uh, Mr. Secretary said, to, for the change of manager application. Um, this application is solely for the change of manager of record with no operational or other changes to the license entity or premise. Um, the proposed manager is Michael Sesnick. Uh, he is a previously approved manager of record by this board. He has extensive experience in the food and beverage industry, is a U.S. citizen, a resident of the Commonwealth, He's very familiar with the rules and regulations of the BLB, 
the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth for the sale of service of alcohol. Uh, we thank the board for their consideration in this matter, and we're happy to answer any questions you have. Attorney Miller, is uh, Mr. Sesnak, has he joined us today? Uh, he was supposed to be. I thought I saw him on earlier, but... Um, yeah, I'm not seeing him on here. I don't see him now. Uh, I apologize for that. Okay, if you could get in touch with him and ask him just if perhaps he could join us before the end of the hearing. I just want to make sure will, he's present. I will reach out right now. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify? Okay, hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. We will return later. Mr. Sesnick joins us. Now calling item three, Colon Management Inc. doing business as AC Hotel by Marriott Cleveland Circle, located at 395 Chestnut Hill Ave in Brighton. Holder of an in-holder all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Colin Foley to Kevin James Matheson, attorney John Aida. Attorney Aida. Yep, good morning, um, Madam Chair, members of the board, John Aida. Uh, McDermott, Copes and Miller, 28th State Street. Um, this is the change of manager to Kevin Matheson. I believe Kevin's joining us. I did speak with him um, earlier, um, but Kevin uh, has over 25 years experience in the hospitality industry. He's also a previous manager of record approved by this board um, at the AC Marriott um, in South End on the Ink Block. Um, so he does have experience in the industry. Um, he is a Massachusetts resident a United States citizen, and uh, of course, familiar with the rules and regulations of the board. Um, hopefully, I can check to see if he's available. Um, uh, Mr. Matheson, if you've joined us, could you just speak up? Okay, Attorney Ayeda. I'll you. make sure we, yeah, I'll give him a call right now and uh, we'll make sure we get him in here. Thank you. Okay. Apologies. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who would like to testify? Okay. Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. We will return to this matter if Mr. Matheson joins. Thank you. Thank you. Now calling item four, Colwyn Management Inc. doing business as residence in by Marriott South End Boston, located at 2001 Washington Street in Roxbury. Holder of a neighborhood restricted in-holder all alcohol license has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Simone Elliott to Gail Shungu, attorney John Aida. Attorney Ada. Yep. Uh, good morning. Um, again, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, uh, on behalf of Colin Management Inc., I do see Gael Shangu joining us, uh, which is good news. Uh, Gael uh, is uh, uh, a prior manager of record at this location. Uh, probably about two years ago, he was approved for this location. So he does have the, uh, um, in addition to that, he does have many years' experience in the hospitality industry. Uh, Gael is a United States citizen, a Massachusetts resident, and fam uh, familiar with the rules and regulations of the board. Um, and Gael, why don't you just say hello again and uh, introduce yourself. Yep, so uh, my name is Gael, uh, current general manager here at the Residence in downtown Austin South End. And uh, yeah, I have over 10, 10 years of experience as a uh, general manager. Thank you for joining us, uh, Commissioner Curran and Commissioner Saxon. Do you have any questions for the applicant today? Oh, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Now calling item number five, Fermented Sciences 2, Inc., doing business as Flying Embers, located at 152 Hampton Street in Roxbury. Holder of a farmer brewery pouring license has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Brendan McLean to Victoria Vaccaro. Attorney Stephen Miller. Attorney Miller. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Marcy Costa, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller on behalf of the applicant. And I believe I'm joined on the call by Victoria Vaccaro. She is the proposed manager of record. Um, she has, if she's on, if she could just. She could just speak up so that she'll pop up on the screen. <laughs> I mean, oh, I see her. I think. Awesome. Hi, Ryan. I see her too. Sorry. Tiora. Sorry. <laughs> <Green on. laughs> Here she is. Uh, so, uh, 
Tori is a U.S. citizen and a Massachusetts resident. She has a number of years uh, in the food and beverage industry, working for Hilton Hotels, as well as some other hospitality industries. Uh, she is aware of the rules and regulations as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol uh, for this board, the state of Massachusetts and the ABCC. Uh, and we're happy to answer any other questions. Um, thank you, Attorney Costa. I don't have any questions. Commissioners, do you? No, thank you. Great. Are there any individuals who would like to testify beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify? Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. And I see that we have been joined by Mr. Sesnick, so uh, we can return briefly to item number two, HM Boston. Um, Madam Chair or Commissioners, did you have any questions for Mr. Sesnick? Mr. Sesnick, if you can raise your hand so we can see you on here. Okay, thank you. Thank you for joining us. I just wanted to make sure you were um, appearing before the board today. And I understand you've been previously approved, so we don't have any further questions for you. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The board will take matter number two under advisement. And I also see that we have been joined by Kevin Matheson. So we can return briefly to item number three. Uh, Mr. Matheson, if you could also raise your hand to let us know where you are in here. Oh, I see his chair. Hold on, I don't know what's going on here. I can hear him. Kevin, we can hear you. <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry. I don't know what's going on with my camera here. One second. Hmm. It looks like it's maybe angled up towards the ceiling. Yeah, it's like facing the wrong way, I think. Okay. Well, I'll take your word that you are on the other side of that camera, and I appreciate you appearing before us. I've had the same issue before, so we're not going to belabor <laughs> that. Does anyone else have any questions for Mr. Matheson or the applicant on this? No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And the board will thank also. You. Thank you. The board will take item number three under advisement as well. Now calling item seven, Mary Ann's Saloon LLC, doing business as Mary Ann's, located at 1937 to 1939 Beacon Street in Brighton. Holder of a general on premise all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the location of the license business from 1937 to 1939 Beacon Street in Brighton to four to eight Franklin Street, Boston. Uh, Premises consists of 2,555 <clears throat> square feet in one room on first floor with bar and seating area, kitchen and restroom in one additional room in basement with second bar and seating area. Total capacity 68, storage and kitchen prep area with additional restrooms. Attorney Michael Ford. Attorney Ford. Uh, good, uh, good morning. Michael Ford here representing the uh, proposed licensee. It's going to be uh, Alston Hall with me. Here is uh, Tim. Uh, with me here is Jacob Jacob Simmons from the management team, and uh, the management is going to stay the same as far as the manager of record. Um, this is formerly Marianne Saloon, which has ceased operations, moving from Beacon Street uh, to the new location. Um, it's going to it, it it is known and will be known as All Alston Hall. Uh, it's a total rebranding of this license. It's repositioned with uh, an upscale neighborhood feel. It's an American bar and it will have uh, small uh, bites to, uh, to complement uh, its extensive uh, beer and wine and alcohol offerings. Uh, hours of operation will be the same, uh, capacity 135. And this is part of a comprehensive plan that the underlying ownership has where it has overlapped ownership with other properties. Uh, and there's six properties that are gonna be uh, surrounding this plan, about 334 units. So this particular location is going to fulfill that need um, for all of those, uh, all of those new uh, residents. Uh, MBTA is there, transit oriented, um, and it's, it will be a, also a destination location with respect to the T. Um, with that, we've done uh, community outreach to the All Civic Association and the Office of uh, Neighborhood uh, uh, Services. Um, and with that, um, we will uh, ask for the uh, board um, to uh, grant the petition. Attorney Ford, who is the manager of record? It's not listed 
Yeah. It's uh, it's, it's a guessing, uh, Tim Col Tim Collins, I believe that's. Uh, is Mr. Collins with us? He's not. He's already been appointed for the uh, the, the the license. Uh, I do have Jacob Simmons uh, here. I can get him, but. Uh, okay, I'm just confused. Who's Jacob Simmons? Jacob Simmons from the uh, management team that's overseeing um, the the renovation and the uh, operate in the operations from the uh, management company. Okay, and Mr. Collins is currently an approved manager record. Yes, he's the currently approved manager for the uh, for the license for, for this particular uh, license, and it's just going to remain the same. Okay. And, and can you tell me a little bit more about this concept? Um, I understand it's near public transportation and stuff, but you said it's a whole new rebranding. What is that? So the whole new rebranding is really speaking to this license itself. Uh, the the license it was Mary Ann's. Um, I'm sure the everyone here is familiar, um, you know, with that uh, operation and its um, you know and its particular concept. Uh, you know, basically a hole in the wall um, <clears throat> um, down in Cleveland Circle. In this particular, trying to do is just completely rebrand re it with the open windows. Um, it's the neighborhood um, location. It's only the 2,500 square feet, but it has that look and feel um, to basically uh, attract a, uh, a, a, a wider um, group of, uh, you know, of patrons. Um, I do have a uh, video presentation of ideas, but I didn't didn't uh, queue it up for today uh, for the uh, for the sake of speed, but I can do that. Oh, that's okay. Um, so it's uh, just a, a transfer. It's not a transfer. It's just a change of location. Just the change of we're just doing the change of location. Okay. Um, okay. At this point, I don't have any questions, but I reserve the right for further questions. Uh, Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? Same for me. No questions at this time. Are there any individuals who would like to testify, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, look on record to support this proposal. As the applicant mentioned, they did extensive community outreach, meeting with the Alston Civic Association. And I believe the board should have received a letter this morning indicating uh, the Civic Association support. Uh, the mayor's office also conducted a butters meeting on October 13th. There were no concerns raised at that meeting. Um, the neighborhood of Alston, um, there's a lot of young people that rely on these service industry jobs and there's a high demand for them. So we think this is a great opportunity to bring well-paying jobs to the neighborhood. Historically, there's also been a bar located at this location as well. Um, which I think Alston Hall is uh, an homage to that, that former um, establishment. So we think this is entirely appropriate and uh, we're looking forward to them being a part of the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. And we did receive that letter and it's been placed on the file. Any further, any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. And I apologize, I accidentally called this item out of order and we'll return to number six, which I, I skipped. Uh, so calling item number six, 142 Berkeley LLC, doing business as one, uh, there is no doing business as 142 Berkeley LLC, located at 142 Berkeley Street, holder of a common vitular seven day all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Andrew White to Kelly McNally. Attorney Mark Evlogiatis. Is there anyone here present on behalf of the applicant? We can return for a second call. Now moving on to item number eight, Z Love LLC, doing business as Telegraph Hill, located at 289 Dorchester Street in South Boston. Holder of a common vitular seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to Telegraph Hill Tavern LLC, doing business as Telegraph Hill Kitchen and Bar at the same location. Stephen Whalen, manager, 1 a.m. closing hour, attorney Michael Ford. Attorney Ford. Good morning again, Michael Ford, uh, representing the, uh, the licensee with me is Steve Whalen, uh, part owner and proposed manager of, uh, of record. This is uh, the location 289 Dorchester Street, and this is simply a transfer of the alcohol uh, license. 
Uh, it's the existing license, existing business assets, which are held by Z Love LLC. And there's going to be no changes uh, to the proposed operation it, it, uh, itself. Uh, the operation um, or name planned at this time. It's a full service traditional restaurant and bar, uh, all alcoholic beverages license, uh, capacity is 53. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the manager of record, Mr. Whalen. He has extensive experience uh, in, the, uh, in the industry, owner of the Tamworth Saloon, Beacon Hill Pub, Sullivan Saloon and Marianne Saloon, um, as well as uh, one outside of the city. Um, he is TIP certified. Uh, mass resident U.S. citizen. He's familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, as well as the AB, um, the CC. And as far as community outreach, uh, there were my office had communications with Haley Dillon from uh, Neighborhood Services. Uh, they did not require an abutters meeting or any further outreach. Uh, that being uh, the same, uh, my office still reached out uh, to the Civic Association to give them um, you know, an alert on this, but they've requested no further uh, information. Um, and with that, Mr. Whalen is um, here to answer uh, any of your uh, any of your questions. Uh, Mr. Whalen, can you just raise your hand? Is that you understand? Yes, that's hi. Uh, hi, thank you for joining us. Um, I don't have any questions, Commissioner Carr and Commissioner Saxon. I don't. Thank you. No, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Hi, yes. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Molly Griffin with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, speaking on behalf of my colleague, Haley Dillon. Um, we're actually asking the board to defer. I, we just got word this morning that Andrew Square Civic Association would like to meet with the client. Um, sorry, I, we just got word of that this morning. So we'd like to ask the board to defer the vote. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify? Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Flink's office. I would like to echo Molly Griffin comments and ask the board to defer the vote. We don't anticipate any issues with this change of ownership, um, but the Andrew Square Civic is very involved in the area and we would really like them to meet at this point, we would also like to support the proposal. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Attorney Ford, would you or your client, uh, are you open to meeting with the um, association? Absolutely. We'll get it right on the uh, right on the calendar. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, seeing no further requests to testify, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Now calling item eight, Bitten LLC, doing business as Cafeteria, located at 279A Newbury Street. Holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to Hereford Investment Group LLC at the same location, George Abujaud, manager, 1 a.m. closing hour. Secondly, has petitioned to amend the description of the license business from rear entrances for stock, two rooms, bar and kitchen on the first floor, Seller for stock with outdoor patio, management services agreement between Bitten LLC as licensee and Cafeteria Boston LLC doing business as Cafeteria Boston approved by BLB and ABCC. Capacity breakdown, basement 41, first floor 40, outside seasonal patio 50. Two, on two floors, approximately 4,000 square feet, upper level consisting of bar and dining area, capacity 55 and lower level consisting of storage kitchen, bar and dining area, capacity 48, with seasonal outdoor patio, approximately 1,000 square feet on private property, capacity 91. Patio is seasonal, March to November with closing hour of 10 p.m. Lastly, has petitioned to pledge the license to Bitten LLC. Attorney Marcy Costa. Attorney Costa. Hi everyone, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, Attorney Marcy Costa, McDermott, Colton, and Miller on behalf of the applicant. I'm also joined by uh, my client, George Abajaud, he is also the proposed manager of record. Uh, as um, Secretary Green uh, said, we are here seeking a transfer of the license uh, to Hereford Investment Group, LLC. 
Uh, this is the space formerly known as Cafeteria on Newberry Street. Uh, been a staple in the city of Boston and on Newberry Street for a number of years. George was a member of the management team of Cafeteria um, LLC that was managing the restaurant previously, and he is now looking to uh, purchase the license and reopen the restaurant. It will be opening under a new DBA. It hasn't been determined yet, so it will be back in front of you all when that is decided on, but the general concept will be remaining the same. Uh, George is uh, currently the manager of record on the license and is also the proposed. He has over two decades of experience in the food and beverage industry, specifically here in Boston, and is a U.S. citizen, Massachusetts resident, and very familiar with all of the necessary rules and regulations as they pertain to this board, the state, and, and the ABCC. Uh, we held an abutters meeting on um, September 29th, and we met with um, the Neighborhood Association of the Back Bay on um, October 4th. Uh, Mr. Abajad has received a lot of support from the other businesses in the area, as well as um, members of the community. Um, he's just really excited to get this location back up and running. We are seeking to uh, increase the amount of seating that is possible at the location, which is the um, request for those uh, additional numbers uh, on both levels and on the outdoor patio. Uh, if you have any questions for George, he's on the call and I'm sure he's happy to answer them. Thank you, Attorney Costa. Um, I don't have any questions. Commissioner Kerr and the Commissioner Saxon. Thank you. Not. Great. Are there any individuals who would like to testify beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Hi, uh, yes. Good morning again, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Molly Griffin with the Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, to echo what Marcy said, we held an abutters meeting on September 29th, and um, the client addressed concerns raised by some direct neighbors. And um, we've received a number of letters of support, but um, I received word what they did a walkthrough with the Neighborhood Association of the Back Bay and the group would like to have more discussion about the proposal at their next meeting on November 12th, I believe. So at this time, we'd like to ask the board to hold the vote until they meet again with the Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Attorney Costa, do you, yep. do your we, client have any issue with that? Nope, we've been in contact with Conrad at NAB, okay. so we are aware that they want to have that again. Okay. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify, uh, meeting with elected officials or their representatives? Okay. okay, seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Now calling item 10, VJP LLC, doing business as the Wine Cave located at 71 to 75 Canal Street, holder of a retail package store, all alcohol license, has petitioned to transfer the license and the location from the above to JHMP Inc. doing business as VND Variety Store, located at 1895 to 1897 River Street in Hyde Park. Mukesh Patel Manager, 11 p.m. closing hour. Lastly, has petitioned to pledge the license to VJP LLC. Attorney Marcy Costa. Attorney Costa. Madam Chair, members of the board, Marcy Costa, McDermott, Colty, and Miller for the applicant. Uh, we are here seeking a transfer of the license and a change of location. The license was previously located on Canal Street, and we are now looking to move it to 1895 to 1897 River Street in Hyde Park. Um, Mukesh Patel, I believe, is on the call as well. He is the proposed manager of record and the owner of the establishment. Uh, V&D Variety Store has been located on River Street for uh, an, just about over five, six years. And uh, Mr. Patel is looking to add the all alcoholic beverages package store license to the location to uh, fulfill the request of a number of his customers seeking an additional amenity to allow them to be able to shop at his store for everything that they're looking for, allowing them to make one stop on their way home or if they live nearby, be able to stop there quickly uh, and get home with everything that they need in one stop. Uh, there, are, there is another store um, a little about a mile down the road. Uh, however, the demand that he's received from customers, um, he's received a number of uh, signatures in support of the license as well as uh, letters of support from customers showing that the addition of this license uh, at the store would in fact be a real convenience for them. And that is the driving force behind the petition to transfer this license to this location. Mr. Patel, um, is a US citizen and a Massachusetts resident. He has extensive experience in this uh, industry. He is the um, holder of a license in Middleton, Massachusetts as well. 
Uh, so he is familiar with the rules and regulations as they pertain to this board, the ABCC and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And uh, he is joining us on the call. We did hold in a butters meeting on October 14th and heard concerns from the community as they relate to um, the possibility of additional litter. And uh, Mr. Patel has uh, added trash cans outside of the store and is really looking to work with the community. Um, we recently heard from the Reedville uh, Neighborhood Watch Group. They would like to meet with us um, in the coming weeks. So I've, we've been working with ONS on that. Mr. Patel's on the call. So if you have any questions, I'm sure he'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Attorney Costa, and thank you for joining us, Mr. Patel. I see you over there at the top of my screen. Um, Attorney Costa, you did describe convenience and one-stop shopping um, as public need for this type of license. Um, you did state there's another store down the road. Um, could you describe for me in the existing market how much space, shelf space will be uh, switched over to alcohol? Absolutely. So Mr. Patel is actually expanding the store in order to accommodate the addition of the license. So it will be uh, about 40% of the store will be dedicated to the um, alcoholic beverage uh, inventory and all of the usual um, items that he currently sells will be remaining. So he's not going to be uh, taking away space from the crate. convenience items. Instead, he's actually expanding to allow the space to grow for the addition, the possible addition of the license. Okay. Is the um, applicant planning on selling nips and singles? He is um, hoping to, it was a concern from the community. So uh, we will be following their lead on um, that, what, their request in that area. It was one of the concerns um, in regards to the litter, having the nips and singles being a contribution to that. So uh, he, your, your client is open to putting a condition on the license of no nips yes. and singles? Okay. Commissioner Karian or Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? I think you're any. Not at the moment, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Um, good morning, Madam Chairperson and members of the board, Danielle Fonseca with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services here. Um, as Marcy did mention, an abutters meeting for our office was conducted on October 14th. Um, we have received letters and signatures in support um, from Marcy and the applicant, and we have also received letters um, and testimony in opposition um, from members of the community. As Marcy also did mention, the Reedville Watch neighborhood group um, is in the process of coordinating a meeting space uh, for potentially the date of November 18th to meet with the applicant and with Marcy uh, to just further express any community concerns and, and get a better understanding of the proposal. And we would just like to ask if the board could hold the vote until um, they are able to meet with the neighborhood group. Thank you. Are there any additional, uh, anybody else who would like to testify on this matter? Hearing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you all. Item number 11 will be rescheduled due to a defect in the legal notice that was sent out. And before I call item number 12, I just want to reiterate the procedures around testimony as the board has already received a great deal of correspondence, both in support and opposition to this matter. Please be advised that all letters and emails have been received, placed in the file and shared with the board. If you have additional testimony you would like to give today, please sign up using the chat function by typing your name, address, and affiliation, if any. You'll be called in the order that you have signed up. Please do not unmute yourself until you are called. Please limit yourself to two minutes and please confine your testimony to the only decision that the board is authorized to make, which is whether a public need exists for this license at this location. If you are unable to use the chat function, I will ask anyone remaining who wishes to testify to raise their hand after we have gone through the chat. If your testimony exceeds two minutes, you will be muted. If there is further testimony that you wish to submit, the record will stay open until the board vote tomorrow, so you may continue to submit written testimony to licensingboard at boston.gov. With that, I will call item number 12, Massachusetts Fine Wines and Spirits, LLC, doing business as Total Wine, Spirits, and more located at 8C Allstate Road in Dorchester. 
has applied for a retail package store all alcoholic beverages license to be exercised on the above. The leased premises will be approximately 23,400 square feet of retail space on the first floor with one main entrance and four additional exits, storage, office, break room, restrooms, walk-in humidor, and wine education room. Closing hours are 10 p.m. Monday to Saturday, 8 p.m. Sunday. Manager, Glenn Allen Strawn. Closing time, 10 p.m. Attorney, Patricia Farnsworth. Attorney Farnsworth. Good morning, uh, Attorney Trish Farnsworth with Lawson and Whiteson in Boston. Uh, good morning, Commission, Commission Woman uh, Joyce and Commissioners and Secretary Green. Um, with me is um, Glenn Strawn, who is under the screen name Noreen, but he is the proposed manager of record. And Ed Cooper uh, from Total Wine, he's the Vice President of Public Affairs and Community Relations. And also uh, Bob Schaefer, who is a general counsel for Total Wine. So I think just, you know, as way of background, um, if you're not familiar with Total Wine, it was founded in 1991 by two brothers. Uh, currently they have more than 200 stores uh, in 27 states and 12,000 employees. Uh, they are now still family owned by the Trones. Um, in 2015, they came into Massachusetts. Uh, and currently we have six stores in Massachusetts, Natick, Everett, Shrewsbury, Danvers, Burlington, and Braintree. Um, this is not your typical um, alcohol store, uh, section 15 store. Um, it's really what they're known for is their large selection. Uh, they have over 15,000 items and that generally breaks down to 8,000 um, wines, 3,000 beers and 2,500 spirits. And this store here, what they would propose is, you know, of those 8,000 wines, they would, they would have 19 of those produced in mass. Beer would have 105 that are produced here in mass and 58 spirits produced here in mass. So they, they try to, um, you know, economically help, you know, the local um, suppliers, producers. Uh, this, the, the stores are large, uh, typically 20,000 to 25,000 square feet. These are not warehouse stores. It's not a Costco, it's not a BJ's. It is a larger, um, you know, fine wine store, um, but they're, they're just beautiful stores. You know, they have the same designer as uh, the Whole Foods stores and they're brightly lit, you know, wide aisles. They have tasting stations and um, also a wine classroom that seats about 40 people. We did um, submit, you know, a package of exhibits, uh, commissioners and secretary. And in um, exhibit D, there are pictures. Um, it's it's the letter from uh, Ed Cooper, and you can see pictures there. Just how beautiful the store is. The it the pictures are on page three, four. Page four depicts the uh, tasting stations and the wine classroom or education room, we'll call it. And page five and page six. So if you have not been in a Total Wine store, I think those pictures um, are helpful. Um, in that wine classroom <clears throat> or the, uh, the classroom itself, they have you know, two hour classes, whether it's teaching wine or, um, you know, brews or distilled spirits, you know, so folks can learn about them, perhaps how to pair with food. Um, they also have kind of virtual tastings so that these producers <clears throat> of these products, you know, the winemaker, <clears throat> excuse me, in California or France, or the distillery in Scotland, they're on the screen, these actual makers and teaching the class. And it's a little interactive, the class folks can ask questions. So these are things that do not happen in other, you know, I'll call package stores that we call them here in, uh, in Massachusetts. Um, 
So the customer experience is just very, very different. And uh, Total Wine has received numerous awards uh, over the years, uh, National Retailer of the Year, for example, or Best Customer Service. Um, they also offer other things. Uh, they have a humidor, walk-in humidors for cigars, and they do not sell lottery tickets in any of their stores. Uh, the staff is also different from other stores. Um, he, this store here, they propose to probably hire 50 to 75 people, um, preference to area residents. 75% of those folks would be full-time. That means they have benefits, 401k. Um, there really is an opportunity for career advancement at Total Wine. Um, these folks are trained, um, you know, to, to provide education to the customers when they come in, you know, to explain the products. They're also trained for compliance, obviously, uh, tips training and that. So it's really extensive training that all of the staff undergo. Um, and you must be greater than 21 years of age to work at Total Wine. They don't hire, you know, kind of like a supermarket would hire someone younger, um, which you can here in Mass, but they do not. Uh, they also take security very seriously, security for their employees, uh, for their customers. Um, so there's one entrance and exit. Uh, they have, you know, management, and um, Mr. Strawn can talk a little bit more about that if you have questions on it, but they're hands-on managers. They're not in a back office. They're out, there's a customer service booth. Um, they, they have control at all times over the premises, even though it's a large premises, they, it's complete control. Uh, there are security cameras, numerous security cameras. There are those public view monitors. You probably see those in TJ Maxx or whatever. When you look up, you walk in, you see yourself. So those are around. Um, all staff are connected. They have a communication system, um, you know, in your ear. So all staff are communicating at all times. Um, they have a policy that employees have to enter or exit with another staff member. Um, again, just for security reasons. Um, they invest a lot in technology. So they have the latest and best technology when it comes to security. Um, the managers, the policy is that they need to go and, you know, walk the premises outside before each shift just to make sure, you know, not only are they in control of the licensed premises, but the area around. And I believe that they've also, in this particular location, the bathrooms will be in the rear of the store. And that was a request of, um, or input from, I believe, the police. Um, Alcohol compliance, they compliance with the laws of uh, the state and the Boston Licensing Board. They take that very seriously. Um, again, I already mentioned the staff are trained both under total wine training, but all are tips trained. Um, there's a, you know, a point of sale system, again, technology that can calculate age when you um, card someone. Uh, they verify for any online sales, for any deliveries. Um, if anyone sells to someone that is not 21 years of age, uh, they are terminated immediately. It's just their policy. Um, they also obviously are trained for signs of any impairment or intoxication, and they have policies and procedures in place on how to handle that, you know, not just to make sure a, to de-escalate a situation. You know, you never want to have a, a situation. Um, so that's alcohol compliance. Uh, this location in South Bay Center, it was a uh, office max that has been closed. And uh, I think exhibit A of that package shows you just like the plan of that shopping center and where the office max was and where the um, total wine is proposed to go in. Um, we also had a, 
the traffic study done, transport study done. That is an exhibit B um, that was completed by MDM Transportation. They are really one of the premier uh, experts in this area. And they determined, um, which I can just read from this, but it's before you, that the total wine and more will not materially impact traffic flow and that the parking supply of 300 plus spaces in front of total wine will adequately accommodate. There's more than 1700 spaces, I believe, at the center itself, but those 300 are in front of total wine. Um, I think, you know, is for this location, public need was determined previously by this board uh, for the liquor aisle license that was uh, sublease in the stop and shop. Stop and shop is still there. Liquor Isle sold their license. I think they operated there six or seven years, uh, but they sold their license to GoPuff and that has been transferred uh, with approval of this board. So that license is gone from the center, transferred out uh, to South Boston to GoPuff and really transferred to not another package store, but to GoPuff, which is a delivery service. So that's really a one less, um, you know, customary package store license that's there. Um, you know, this is a unique location. It's a, you know, it's in this uh, mall, um, this plaza, which is typically where the total wines are located, you know, because it, they feed off of each other. Someone can go to stop and shop, do the food shopping, then they can go to Total Wine, all the other stores. It's just um, nice, you can just go. And so that will bring business to the, um, to the plaza. It's also the unique location that it's off 93. So in addition to the people that live in and around Dorchester or Boston, I mean, Total Wine is a destination kind of a store as well. So that will bring more people. Um, so there is a, you know, public need still at this location that was demonstrated previously. It hasn't disappeared. Arguably it's um, even, you know, more now. Uh, we put in the census information, the new census information and Boston population has increased 9.4%. Dorchester is 18% of the total residents of Boston. So, you know, Total Wine is different from the other package stores in the neighborhood. And it is certainly gonna be a significant upgrade to Liquor Isle that was there. Um, they're going to put in $2 million to build out. And, um, you know, I think the board needs to think also that, you know, with internet companies, GoPuff or Amazon or all of those, you know, I think people are saying, well, something like Total Wine is going to put out the local businesses. There's no evidence of that. Uh, there's no evidence that in the six current locations that has happened. And I think people should want something like Total Wine in versus the go puffs and the, and the Amazons. So they employ people, there's a presence in the neighborhood. Um, it's only a benefit, really a common good and public need. Um, we did, uh, for public need support, we did put in a petition. And so you should have that, has uh, over 500 signatures. Exhibit H is very helpful of the, um, packet of exhibits that we put in. So if you want to look at that, you know, it kind of just summarizes the results. And you see that 33% of the signatories were from Dorchester, Mattapan, 20% South Boston, 14% South End and Roxbury. So really a lot of people that are around this area, you know, signed in support of um, Total Wine demonstrating public need. Um, I think we, you also have other letters of support. Um, I'll just point out to Andrew Square Civic Association um, is in support. I think they wrote a very nice letter. Um, yeah, and, yeah. 
and they actually you have all the letters of support so okay. I don't want I know I don't want I'm not reading them or anything but I just wanted to point out that they mentioned that they thought total wine was different and better than what is is there now um and new market business association I think also wrote a very helpful letter um for the manager Mr. Strawn he's highly qualified his resume is in with his manager application um more than suitable i mean i can run through the three questions or you can ask him um, um is he present he I is he's under the screen name noreen how you doing oh, oh yeah thank you for joining us today um i'll jump in and ask you the standard manager record questions mr strawn um <laughs> excuse me are you a citizen yes are you a resident of the commonwealth Yes, I am, proudly in Somerville. Thank you. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes, over 20 years. And are you familiar with the rules and <coughs> regulations of this board? The ABC yes, I am. And the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Absolutely, yes. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna turn it back over to your attorney to see if there's any other comments or things. I guess, like I, I think at this point, if you don't, if you can, you know, bear with us. We do want to get as much information and so you understand really what the application is. Um, I want to turn it now to Ed Cooper. Um, and he can talk about, you know, community engagement and just, you know, what Total Wine has done for or how it is, it is involved with the community, you know, nationally and here in Mass and proposed in Boston. So I uh, get yeah, Mr. Cooper. Thanks, Trish. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee, the commission. I, um, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to, to appear before you today. Um, as, as, uh, as Attorney Farnsworth uh, mentioned, uh, I am the head of public affairs and community relations and um, uh, have, have since uh, early June um, been uh, active and involved um, with um, with our team in Boston in meeting with and listening to elected officials, community leaders, civic organizations, uh, nonprofit leaders, uh, the Boston police and business leaders uh, about our proposed um, a store in South Bay Center. We've, we've done this um, in many instances to, together with our landlord Edens um, uh, in which we've uh, reached out and uh, um, listened to that which those organizations have uh, um, uh, have been able to provide us with some advice and counsel and suggestions as to how to move forward. Um, one of the very good suggestions, or two of the very good suggestions, quite frankly, that Attorney Farnsworth um, uh, referenced was the the uh, how to be able to to um, put together and design the store. Uh, that's proposed for that site. Uh, the bathrooms being in the back was a suggestion, quite frankly, from meeting with uh, the uh, local police precinct um, and uh, the leaders of that precinct. Um, uh, and uh, it was also suggested to me um, and the company um, on numerous occasions um, that, uh, that, um, uh, uh, that we should refrain from, from selling NIPS, 50 uh, milliliter, uh, bottles of alcohol, quarter pints, uh, and and forties. Uh, we extended that, quite frankly, not just to malt from malt, malt liquor, which which was uh, often referenced, but to um, forty ounce national brand beers um, uh, and the like. So um, uh, we we have made a commitment to uh, to not sell those products in this store. Um, as I said, from June, uh, actually from uh, um, uh, from uh, May onward, we've met with these organizations. Um, uh, if you like, I can tell you a little bit about those. Uh, I don't want to take up too much time, but I can tell you a little bit about those uh, meetings, um, primarily with, with uh, the uh, two, two main organizations that are uh, closest, their neighborhoods are closest to South Bay Center, and that's McCormick Civic Association and Andrew Square Civic Association. We also had com communication and I appeared at numerous meetings, not just with McCormick um, and Andrew Square, but also with the Columbia Savin Hill Civic Association, 
um, uh, informational meetings, executive committee meetings, um, uh, their, their planning committee meetings in the, in the cases in which those organizations had planning committees. Uh, and, um, uh, and I've uh, appeared before the membership of both uh, the uh, McCormick Civic Association. I've appeared twice um, before them and uh, at Andrew Square as well. And as you know, um, um, uh, Trish had cited, and you know the, the outcomes from, the, from the, the votes of that membership. Um, Can I just jump in and ask you a question about that to make sure I have it down correctly? Uh, New Market supported it. Andrew Square support, supports it. McCormick, it was a tie. That's great. As far as those who voted and Columbia Savin Hill, you did meet with them, but they did not submit anything in writing. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I was clear on that. Yes, ma'am. So um, uh, what I can tell you uh, is a little bit about um, our, our uh, being active and involved in the neighborhoods and communities in which we in which we're located. Um, that is one of the cornerstones of the company. Um, so in every single market in which we in in which we are um, have have a store, um, uh, we are active and involved in those communities. Um, and uh, just to give you a, a kind of a writ large um, uh, about Total Wine and more brands um, across the country. Uh, in last year, we donated in excess of, of $10 million of in-kind and monetary contributions to 13,000 organizations um, in the states in which we served. And we helped those organizations raise um, an estimated $85 million to support their programs. We first entered Massachusetts in 2015. Uh, and since that time, we have uh, donated in excess of $3 million of cash and in-kind to uh, um, uh, close to 2,000 nonprofit organizations and help those organizations raise uh, $18 million um, for, their, for their good causes. Um, in addition, quite frankly, to what Trish had mentioned with regard to the, the uh, classrooms that we build in each and every one of our stores, including this one um, at South Bay, um, in addition to what they're used for in terms of uh, training of our team members uh, and, um, and the classes and, uh, and events that are, are held within them uh, that, that Trish mentioned, when, they, when these classrooms um, are not in use, which is a majority of the time, we offer those, that classroom space free of charge to any civic organization, civic or community organization. Um, all they have to do is go on the website uh, to book our room at totalwine.com and request that uh, um, the the use of that. So that's forty a forty seat um, meeting space for for local community and neighborhood organizations. Um, I think. Um, lastly, I I'd just like to mention that uh, again, working with the community groups and civic associations, um, we fashioned a community engagement our community engagement efforts. It's included in your packet. Um, but it includes it includes our um, our um, uh, being excited to work to with the city to be able to hire the fifty to seventy five folks that uh, local folks that will be in this store. Um, partner with the city of office um, the, the city's office of civic engagement on uh, their Love Your Block program to revitalize Boston neighborhoods. That's what one of the things that we heard loud and clear from the civic organizations, neighborhood organizations. Um, we've already identified a couple. Of, um, of great nonprofit charitable organizations to be part of our grand opening, should we be successful uh, in being able to open that um, and, uh, and look forward to working uh, hand in glove with them to not only um, open the store, but to promote their organizations and, and help them uh, raise money for their good work. Um, we've created a fund for, for um, materials and expenses um, and for improvements to be undertaken by by the neighboring um, uh, communities. Um, and we've uh, created a, um, a, a, a fund um, to, to provide grants, um, uh, outright unrestricted grants uh, to uh, 10 to 12 great um, local organizations that are uh, involved in uh, trying to um, address issues of addiction, mental health, Homelessness, food insecurity, and local youth development. Um, that, that package, that package is um, um, uh, uh, 
is 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 one that's over seven hundred thousand dollars, and that's I think that that um, shows our commitment, our strong commitment to the community. And with that, I will um, I'll answer any other questions you may have. Uh, thank you very much. I'll turn it back to Attorney Farnsworth to see if there's anything she wants to add before we move into questions. Just wanted to confirm that that can be a condition on the license, and we expect that condition, the no nips um, and such. So we're fine with that. Okay. Which, you know, I don't think is the case for other neighboring package stores. <clears throat> uh, so just a couple of questions. Will there be delivery from here? I see yes. in the testimony there is going to be website online ordering, same day delivery. Um, and I just wanted to confirm for the record that <clears throat> that is part of the um, business plan. Yes, yes, we, okay. we, provide, we provide delivery. Okay. Um, and, 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 and pick up as well. <coughs> another form of delivery to the curb. Thank you, okay. Um, so just to sum up what, um, what I have in my notes, there's going to be um, classroom space um, that can also be used for the community. Um, there is online ordering, same day delivery and pickup. We'll be taking over a pre-existing vacant storefront. Um, there's already six stores in Massachusetts and the closest one I'm guessing would be Braintree. Is that right? Um, and um, you have the support of Newmarket, Andrew Square, um, and um, I think those, I just wanted to get that on the record right now. These are locally grown in some um, aspects, products. Um, your selection is more of, it's not exactly what you'd call a, a big box store, but it's larger, you have a very large selection. And I'm just trying to get this on the record because we've received um, an enormous amount of uh, correspondence on this and uh, we have received it and we are still uh, reading through it. Um, one question is on, how many staff, I know it says that you'll have, you plan to hire 50 to 75 local residents on a typical Friday or Saturday, how many staff are working on a particular shift? Um, uh, I'll leave, I'll let Glenn uh, answer that question. Yeah, on, on the weekends, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we could have up to 40, 45 people working in the building at that time and, and about 75% of them will be full-time employees. I've never been to a total wine, so could you describe for me the security of people? Um, tell me how the security works there. Yeah, we have one entrance, one exit. We have cameras okay. everywhere. We have the, um, the public view cameras as you walk in, so everyone sees that they're on camera. Uh, we have earpieces, and um, every employee has those, so you can communicate if anybody, you feel like they're intoxicated, you can go um, address that situation. Um, and we, we have a lot of engagement on the floor. We don't have offices. All the managers work on the floor. So we're constantly engaging with customers and seeing what the traffic flow is and, and helping where needed. So we have, a, 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 you know, if 40 people are there, we have 40 eyes and ears on everyone in the building. So we can address any issues and concerns of safety for the customer or for our employees. Okay. Um, I'm going to reserve my right to ask further questions, but I want to give an opportunity for Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon to ask some questions. I'm going to reserve as well, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you, Kathleen, for asking the security question. I think we, we would be remiss not to identify this area as a particular, of one of, of, of concern, at least for me. Um, so security is, a, is a, definitely something I would want to look at more. Thank you. Are there any individuals who wish to testify beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes. Uh, good morning. Sorry. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. George Wynn with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant has been meeting with the community for some time. Um, our office has received over 2,000 signatures and letters of opposition, including from the McCormick Civic Association. We have also received over 300 signatures in support of the proposal, including two letters from the Andrew Square Civic Association and the New Market Business Association. At this time, our office would like to go on record in opposition. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Julie Ryan from 
Boston City Councilor Frank Baker's office. Um, after long consideration input from our constituents, abutting neighbors, and small businesses in the district, we would also like to go on record in opposition of this application. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Alicia Payne here. I'm half of Councilor Flaherty. <coughs> Excuse me, Councilor Flaherty, I'd like to go on record in opposition as well. Uh, and stand with the neighborhood and Councilor Baker. Our office has received a high volume of opposition to this project uh, due to concerns around the, the uh, proximity to Mass and Cass and the effect of locally, on, sorry, the effect on locally owned liquor stores in the area. We strongly encourage the board to consider the broader concerns uh, about this application and its location. Thank you. Are there any other representatives from elected officials who would like to testify? I do see a few folks who have signed up in the chat to testify. I will start calling again as a reminder, if you wish to testify, please do sign up in the chat with your uh, name and affiliation, if any. With that said, I will start with Damian Powell of Hinkley Allen. Uh, you can unmute yourself and begin. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Damian Powell, Hinkley Allen. I'm uh, here on behalf of the Save Boston Small Business Coalition. Uh, we're proud to have over 2,000 folks that have signed our petition in opposition to Total Wine's application. Uh, we submitted a large uh, number of materials yesterday. I'm confident uh, the board has that and I won't um, go through all of those, but just briefly want to um, respectfully submit that there are four independent reasons that the application of Total Wine should be denied. Uh, the first is the overwhelming opposition of the community. I'm um, joined by Joe Rawl, who uh, I know signed up to speak as well, the former neighborhood services coordinator. Um, and I'll leave that uh, for him to address, but let me address the other three reasons quickly. Number one, we respectfully submit um, that this area is already well served by existing section 15 licensees. We've submitted documentation showing the number in the vicinity. I think it's exhibit or tab three to our submission. There's four section 15 licensees within a half a mile, eight within a mile, 23 within a mile and a half. Many of those, most of them are all alcoholic uh, licenses um, and uh, provide the same sort of wine and beverages that Total Wine does as well. Uh, I'd also point out uh, Attorney Farnsworth said the public need was previously determined by this board and referenced Liquor Isle. Uh, Liquor Isle, as I understand it, was a thousand square feet sub lessee of Stop and Shop. Total Wine is now proposing a 23,000 square foot uh, store. So 23, 23 times the size of what was previously there. I'm sure the board is aware of previous issues um, at Liquor Isle, um, and we submit on those two grounds that the, the area is already well served by the existing licensees. Second reason uh, that we submit that uh, the application should be denied is that the proposed location is inappropriate. And just three quick points. One, we believe there was a previous agreement by the landlord not to have a liquor store uh, when um, expansion of South Bay was undertaken in 2002. I know some community uh, members have raised that. Mr. Rawl can speak to that as well. The second uh, point is there's a high level of criminal activity in this area. As the board is well aware, we submitted statistics from Boston Police, 2,200, over 2,200 calls just this year to the South Bay property, uh, 1,300 to Allstate Road. Uh, it's, they're staggering figures. Um, stop and shop alone has had 368 calls this year, meaning there's more than one call a day uh, to the supermarket um, in South Bay. Uh, the idea of adding a 23,000 foot alcohol superstore to that uh, does not make any sense uh, respectfully. Um, that combined with the close proximity to mass casts, um, the board's well aware of the public health crisis that's going on. It's walking distance. I know there's a submission by the Mass Addiction Prevention Alliance, which I think touches on that. Um, so for those reasons, we think putting a 23,000 square foot store uh, in this area is inappropriate. And then lastly, uh, Attorney Farnsworth talked about alcohol client, uh, compliance being taken very seriously by the applicant. Um, and we pointed out, and as the board is well aware, the reputation of the applicant is a relevant consideration. Um, we respectfully submit that Total Wine's reputation uh, is one of a history of violating alcohol regulations and contempt for alcohol regulations. In Massachusetts alone, they've already been cited soon after opening Natick and Everett for um, selling below cost. 
which is part of the playbook that, that has happened in other states, Connecticut being one of the best examples where they published news article um, openly and flagrantly saying they were gonna violate the state law um, and then challenging the state of Connecticut the whole way to the Supreme Court um, and losing ultimately. They've also been cited twice for selling to minors in Massachusetts. Attorney Powell, can you, yeah. uh, we have all that information. I have the like four inch uh, submission um, and we, we are reviewing it. Could we um, get back to the public need of an additional license at this location? Yeah, so I don't, I, I won't say any more um, uh, on that front, um, but for, for all those reasons we submit, um, and Mr. Rawl, I think will will add to it um, that uh, the board should deny the application. Thank you. Thank you, and we have indeed received the, uh, the evidence provided by Hinkley Allen. Up next to testify, Joe Rall, Benchmark Strategies. Mr. Rall, you may begin. Hey, uh, good, good morning, commissioners, and uh, thank you for your service. Uh, Joe Rall, I'm at uh, one um, uh, Boston place in Boston, uh, representing uh, the Save Our Small Business Coalition, and wanted to touch base quickly on, uh, you know, the overwhelming opposition, uh, you know, well over 2,000 signatures uh, from residents who reside in Boston, uh, we went through great effort to actually uh, remove folks uh, that were not in the general vicinity. Uh, something where we have seen, um, you know, the, the proponent of this application reaching out to other towns and cities as far away as Shrewsbury, asking for them to weigh in on a Boston issue. Um, we believe that the community need has been met. Uh, this question has been asked uh, to the proponent on two separate occasions. Uh, in his first response to that uh, was it's fine wine is the community need. And the second time at Andrew Square, it was convenience, which we know is not a, uh, and today was a different uh, reason for that public need. Um, part of the history, and I, I know this has been a long hearing already, but I do believe it's important. When, when Samuels and Associates uh, brought South Bay Mall to Boston and opened it up, the thought concept back then was to share the wealth and bring business into the neighborhoods, uh, not to block off the neighborhoods. Uh, that has been long standing. And uh, during the uh, second um, you know, reconfiguration of the mall uh, under Edens and Avant at the time, Joe Perrick, who is a Edens uh, and Avant employee, had committed to myself, who was neighborhood services uh, at the time, uh, State Representative Marty Walsh, City Councilor Jimmy Kelly, uh, Councilor Maureen Feeney, and numerous community groups, uh, if we were able to move forward, or if they were able to move forward uh, with the expansion, they would prohibit liquor stores from going in uh, to that location. Um, that has been raised, and I know it is noted in the McCormick Civic uh, opposition letter, um, I do think that's relevant. Uh, the, the answer that we've all been given uh, from Total Wine and Edens is that it's not memorialized. Um, as you know, Commissioner, uh, many of the residents are all volunteers and, and do this on their free time. Uh, you know, we tend to take people at their word. Um, we do believe that the public need is already being met and will not, you know, this will not help the public need. Uh, the, the, the establishments that Attorney Powell mentioned earlier uh, are a number of uh, local establishments that built this city. Uh, we've heard a lot of, of equity over the past year. Uh, yesterday, we had an incredible election of two incredible, wonderful women, uh, and one was elected mayor for the first time. And um, in our you know, talk with the neighbors, uh, two neighborhoods have been talked to. Um, there are two other communities that directly abut this area, uh, one being the Dudley Street Neighborhood Initiative uh, in the Roxbury area, and the other being South End. All four neighborhoods have weighed in previously on anything that has to do with South Bay. Um, it, it is our belief that uh, the community engagement process um, has not been met, and if so, it, it's actually been tainted by going outside of the Boston limits and not engaging with those that are direct abutters uh, in Roxbury in the South End. I also do want to point out that the New Market Business Association 
uh, is a group that is um, certainly in favor of businesses in the community, uh, and they are not residents that, that live in that general vicinity. Um, we believe uh, for, for a number of reasons that you know, the public need is, is there and it's currently being met. Um, and there are a number of establishments that where you can purchase your, your alcohol and, and liquor um, and that add in uh, essentially, you know, at 23,000 square feet, 23 more liquor stores in one location is, is gonna do more harm than good to the community. Uh, we respectfully ask uh, that you please consider uh, the residents of a diverse number of folks that have signed on to the petition to oppose this. I believe it's at 2011, um, you know, which far away uh, you know, respectfully the 49 people that were at those two civic association meetings. Uh, one being John W. McCormick, which opposed it, uh, and the other being Andrew Square. Uh, so we would respectfully ask for, for your opposition in regards to this hearing. Thank you, Mr. Rall. Up next, signed up to testify Heidi Heilman. And again, a reminder, please uh, confine testimony as much as possible to whether there is a public need met for this type of license at this location. You may begin. Oh, you need to unmute yourself. Thank you very much for your service and um, for hearing me today. I just wanna make a few comments. I think you all have read our letter of opposition requesting that the um, application be denied. Um, I have some, some additional supplemental information that I'd just like to impart to you today about alcohol and about why we're so concerned about the vulnerability of that area and, um, and its location. And the largest, one of the largest research studies done on alcohol in, in the country did show that 10% of the population, the American population drink up to 74 drinks per week. And that's those 74 drinks per week of that 10% of the population is 75% of all alcohol consumed in the country. So that indicates that these, these um, alcohol outlets make their money. I mean, essentially they're making their money off people who are drinking a couple handles a day. So um, that's important information when you're thinking about alcohol licensing and where it's gonna go and how it's gonna, how, how you're gonna have these operations in place. Um, and, and many in those groups of that 10% of the population, and we're talking 10% of your population, if you're going to go down to the lo local area, 10% of your population um, are in that group that are devastated by alcohol uh, with dramatic impact on their friends and family. And such remarkable repeat sales for this segment of the population may be good for the alcohol industry in a, in a place like Total Wine because they make their big profits off it, but it's not good for the communities and the neighborhoods They've, they've, um, they've also done a study that found that we pay an additional $2.05 per drink for direct costs for losses in workplace activity, healthcare, um, and, and criminal justice expenses. Um, and these are costs that, we, that, that local people feel. Um, um, alcohol is also responsible for 88,000 deaths, a third of traffic deaths, and more than 10% of US children live with a parent with alcohol problems. Um, and that's because you know 10% of our adult population um, are addicted to alcohol, and and it's not by choice. It's it's that um, alcohol can increase. What it does is it's it's it increases the neurotransmitter dopamine, which is the reward center of the brain, and can trick the brain into thinking that alcohol is the most important thing for survival. Um, and one of the problems is that dopamine can only can only be not only can be released when you drink alcohol, but also when you smell it and see it. And, um, and that's the problem there in that area because you have over 10 to 15 recovery and treatment programs right there. And so you've got people that are really struggling to, to stay sober and they're gonna have visuals of this big alcohol store right in that location. So that's, that's one of the reasons it's really important to think about where, where this thing is gonna be, be um, placed. Um, and the neighbor, and also that neighborhood right there is, you know, bordered by uh, neighborhoods that are predominantly communities of color and with their rich ethnic diversity. And those those populations have long been targets of discriminatory social structures that have made their targets for that have been targets for alcohol outlets. In fact, there are eight times more alcohol stores in American um, in Black American neighborhoods than white neighborhoods. 
So this is an area extremely vulnerable and given the demographics and that it is less than half a mile from the mass cast site that was declared a public health crisis last month, it just it doesn't seem like this is a very prudent um, way to bring economic development and, and a city planning to, to the area given the crisis that's going on. Um, and, and so, you know, we talk about in, in our work at the Massachusetts Addiction Prevention Alliance, we talk about that there's, there's such things as addiction economics, where we build an economy around addiction. And this is kind of what we're looking at in the, this is the face of the problem right now of your location is that we, you know, as you have an alcohol store there, that's going to make 75% of its revenues from people who are drinking two handles a day. That's a big problem. It's going to, it's going to help with the economy of your addiction, you know, recovery and treatment centers, but it's going to tear apart communities there. So that's, that's our concern. And, and I, and I just appreciate your time. I'll stop there. Thank you. At this point, I would like to turn it back to the commissioners quickly to see if they have any additional questions before I return to testimony. Uh, thank you, Danny. I do have questions, but, and I'm sorry, my question is for Mr. Rell. The petition that's included in the package submitted under the cover letter for Hinkley Allen, can you uh, let me describe for us a little bit more about how you obtained these names? Uh, we, we started our uh, work on uh, the preliminary election day. Uh, and then we worked within neighborhoods of, of Boston, uh, South Boston, Dorchester, uh, extended into the South End, Roxbury, uh, and then as far up as Mattapan. So it, were the, we had we had folks, you know, physically gathering signatures. So inside other liquor stores, or we, we did do that as well, but uh, but for the most part, we were at polling locations. Uh, outside, we we're actually at South Bay Mall this past weekend, where we were asked to uh, leave. Uh, you know, by, by security and so forth, even though it is uh, prudent to go in there and get signatures for other causes, uh, we were shown the door for that. Okay, and you're saying that there was a previous uh, agreement with the landlord not to have a liquor store here? Yes, and I imagine we were in South Bay? an affidavit. I'm sorry? I'm talking about a Packer store. It's anywhere in South Bay? In South Bay in general, there was an agreement that was made. There was a package store in the grocery store. And I want to put on the record, I was not chair of the board. I know there was some community meeting where yes. people said I was chair of the board when that was approved. I was not. So I just want to make that clear. No, oh no, I get that. And that was not an assertion I was trying to cast on you. If it no, no, not you. I just, I, I had calls from people asking yeah. what, you know, they thought I was getting fired um, because I approved the supermarket. <laughs> the store. But I, as you know, Mr. Rell, I wasn't. In this position. Yes. No, no, I, I'm well yeah. aware so of that. Just, there's a lot of misinformation out there about uh, this process, and I just want to be clear. So you're saying, for the record, there was never, ever supposed to be a liquor store in South Bay, and that we've already had one in South Bay, that it was just yes. not successful. Okay. And this is a different concept. This is almost like having a Home Depot and then, let's say, a Curry Hardware or something, a local hardware store. I'm just trying to wrap my head. I've never been to a Total Wine, so... I can't really say I'm familiar with it. And they are going to have deliveries from here. I know the t written testimony says that. I'm is sorry, that is that for me, Commissioner? Well, I know it was part of the conversations. I didn't know if that came up with, with your, um, so, your conversations. You know, this this oh, was yeah. back in, in 2002, 2003, I believe. Uh, I don't think the concept of, well, I know the concept of app-based delivery was not around back then. Um, okay. This whole, uh, you know, it, as I'm sure you, you're familiar with Joe Chase on at Columbia Seven Hill, uh, he, Millie Rooney, uh, Sharon Neukaitis, uh, Patty McCormick and others uh, worked in collaboration uh, with Joe Perrick at Edens and Avant in regards to the Super 88 issue, which you may, uh, may be familiar with, which was a, a massive uh, headache uh, in and around the area. In, in order to uh, collaborate with the Super 88 that was there at the time in button heads with Edens and Avant. Um, a massive undertaking went underway to collaborate to try to make the entrance and egress to, sell, uh, to Super 88 work and allow the South Bay Shopping Center to expand. Okay. The, the major bone of contention uh, at the time, other than traffic, which seems to have been, you know, kind of worked on, uh, was liquor. And the fact that uh, liquor would not be sold or uh, package stores would not be opened within the mall. Uh, I did actually hear 
uh, since I've started working with some of these small businesses about the uh, the 1,000 square foot aisle and stop and shop that did you know get in there unfortunately, and I think it did get un in there under opposition from um, yeah, not uh, from the community and from the elected officials. For the record, I wasn't chair of the board at the time. Oh I yes, no, I'm very well aware. I want to jump in on that real quick. Um, that was contentious, uh, the liquor aisle. Um, there was significant op opposition. Um, we, I think all of us felt it was a very close call. Um, and <clears throat> one thing that is important to note is the small size of that proposed liquor aisle was um, touted as you know a plus. And if I can only speak for myself, I saw it as a plus. Um, I, I, I was skeptical about the vote. It was a close call. Uh, but I think that, I, especially, I can only speak for myself again, but when it came up to uh, remove that license, uh, I was happy to see that application. Uh, it was my impression that the operation of the liquor aisle at Stop and Shop was actually somewhat of a failure. Um, didn't quite work. Uh, didn't work the way that they said it was uh, supposed to work. Um, so I did want to make comments on the liquor aisle situation. There were, it was raised, um, that there, there was, um, you know, verbal agreements that uh, a liquor store wouldn't go into South Bay. But for me at the time, it wasn't entirely clear how, how set in stone that was. It, it certainly wasn't argued as um, forcefully as it has been today and in these supporting documents. So I, I, I can just speak to the process that I saw at the time for the liquor aisle. It was, um, you know, touted as a small convenience for the shoppers of Stop and Shop. Um, it, it wouldn't have a great impact on, on the operation there. And uh, my impression of how that went after we did approve it was not favorable. So that's what I can say to, to that as someone who was on the board at the time. Yeah, I actually echo what Liam said because I was, I was there during the vote. And to be honest, that's one of the votes that I regret. So uh, to, to see that that license um, left uh, and went to GoPro, I was not disappointed. Thank you. Um, returning to testimony, we do have the next gentleman signed up in the chat is Michael Ratty. You may unmute yourself and begin. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for um, thanks for having this uh, public event today. Uh, I'm just certainly I'm speaking as a South End resident, I'm not not a business owner. To be clear, uh, I live. Um, at 460 Harrison Ave, which if anyone is familiar with the neighborhood is over by the SOA galleries. I'm looking out at 93 right now. So kind of at the weird nexus of the South End, uh, South Boston and Dorchester, uh, live right down the road from South Bay. Uh, I'm there a lot as a customer. Um, my major concern is on the small business end, uh, people much more knowledgeable and smarter than me uh, will speak to and I've already spoken to the concerns about the proximity to mass and CAS. Um, I'm just simply concerned for small businesses and how this would affect uh, them. Uh, to be clear and open, I've been to Total Wine before. I've been to the Everett and uh, the Natick stores. I uh, have nothing against them, not against their business or businesses opening in Boston, but um, I just personally, with no offense to the company, don't think the store makes a lot of sense at South Bay. Um, there are speaking for my own neighborhood, and I don't know if any any other neighbors are will be speaking. But you know, I think immediately of two South End Wine Emporium stores, uh, Bricks, which is over on Washington Street, and uh, Urban Grape, which is closer to the Back Bay, but is a very popular independent, locally owned wine store. Actually, just won a, a national award from the Chamber of Commerce, I think, a week or two ago. Um, I'm concerned about how it's going to affect those stores. Uh, I'm also concerned about how it's going to affect places like Social Wines, which is right over the bridge in South Boston and other uh, small stores. Um, again, I've been to Total Wine. You know, they have a lot of selection and I'm not against that. Um, you know, we, uh, I'm a parent of two, so I'm up at that Everett Plaza a lot. Um, like some of you might be at Costco, just buying things like, you know, paper goods and diapers and wipes and everything. Um, We'll also, while we're there, buy beer and wine at, you know, some at Costco, but I also don't think a Costco would make any good sense at South Bay as well. 
Um, and in some of the coverage and some of the neighborhood comments, there is certainly concern about the effect on local businesses and small businesses. Um, and I would also just bring up not to forget the breweries and distilleries that are in the area. Um, I believe that all are, if not all, but most of them do offer a retail concept. Uh, Dorchester Brewing Company, very popular, very progressive, um, locally owned brewery is literally right next door to South Bay. They have a Mr. robot. Ratty, we're not really talking about competition. Um, so if you could just refocus your comments um, because you've had um, some time already. We have a long list of people on the proposal here. All right, thanks. I'll, 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 I guess I'll cut it there. I think I've said my piece. If I could just add one more thing. I appreciate what they were getting at with offering the um, classroom space as community space. And I, I, I see what they're getting at. I think that makes more sense in apartments and condo buildings where there's something on the ground floor where there's a multi-use space that could be used for community space. Uh, marching people through a liquor store to the back. The classroom space is nice for wine tastings and everything. I know the classroom space is in the back store, back location of the Everett store. I'm not super sure that would make sense or be super appropriate for community space. Uh, maybe for you know professional meetings, but obviously that would also probably discount bringing kids to that community space because you'd be walking them through a liquor store. So that's the only other thing. Thank you for the time, and uh, sorry I uh, went off topic a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a request from Marta Carney to place her opposition on the record. Next on the list to speak is Karen Foley. You may unmute yourself and begin. Karen, where are you? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right, I haven't done this in a while. Hi, this is Sharon from Boston City Council. And Eastwood. Oh, we lost you, Karen. Karen, we just lost you. Oh. I can kind of hear you, Karen, but you seem like you're in a tunnel. Can you hear me now? Oh, gosh. No, we did at the beginning. I don't know if you put your hand over the mic or something. Okay, we, we, we can return to you uh, if, if you can figure out how to get your audio to work. Great. Uh, I don't see anybody else who has signed up in the chat. If there's anybody else who would like to testify, uh, if you could please either raise your hand so I can see you visually or use the raise your hand function. I can unmute you that way. I just wanna say for the record, Karen put in the chat that, um, Councilor Asabi George is opposed or Karen's opposed? Councilor, the off. Councilor Asabi George is. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Definitely... I can hear you Perfect. now. Okay. Thank you. Great. Is there anybody else who wishes to testify on this matter? Okay. Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Before we wait, before wait, we, wait, wait, yeah. Can, can we just have a um before we go to uh, attorney Farnsworth? I just want to go back to the commissioners to see if they have any additional questions based on go the ahead. testimony they have, and then I'll give you an opportunity to wrap it up. Yeah, Commissioner Curran, do you have any questions? Most of my reservation was based on liquor aisle, so I think I've said my piece there. Commissioner Saxon, do you? No further questions, thank you. Okay. Uh, Attorney Farnsworth, I just want to uh, give you an opportunity um, as I listen to the testimony today and read through the voluminous letters of support and opposition and the proposals. Um, I'm struck by some of the comments that were here today. And again, competition isn't something we take into consideration. Public need is. Um, I, I'm thinking of some of these neighborhood liquor stores um, and you know why someone goes to South Bay. It is for these big box stores. It is for Target. It is for um, the large Home Depot. Um, it is for you know the the those large stores. Um, I want to give you an opportunity, then you can add something to um, add some more color to the public need um, as we contemplate this application in the next forty eight hours. Right. Um, I mean, there is no other store like Total Wine. You know, I think that, and there is a public need. You know, you have our petition. And, you know, I really think that the opposition that you've heard here today is coming from the surrounding, 
existing package stores. And you cannot, unfortunately, but the law is clear that a board may not take into account protection of existing package stores from competition on this application. You know, in this petition to save Boston small business, I have it in front of me. I mean, basically it states, Total Wine has this proposal for a 20,000 square foot liquor store and distribution center. What is a distribution center? That's not what Total Wine is. And they believe this alcohol center and store will negatively impact the local small businesses. And then they say, including food stores and urban markets. I mean, there's absolutely no evidence of that. There's six Total Wines in the state. Um, and it's just, it's frustrating that they spin this when it's really to save um, the competitors. And it's clear, you know, if you look at exhibit E in the package, when Mr. Cooper first reached out to the three local neighborhood groups, they emailed him back. And their first concern was this deal, alleged deal, that agreement that Edens or the owner of the mall would never put a package store in there. Um, I think, first of all, that that's probably an illegal restraint, you know, if you, if you read the Toscano case. And also, you know, we've asked Edens and they have told us that there is no such agreement. Um, and then, you know, in paragraph two here, protecting small businesses is of paramount importance, of particular concern is liquor land. I mean, this is all about competition. And um, again, you really cannot take that. So I would suggest that, you know, this petition and, and Mr. Rowe and attorney Powell, you know, are, are absolutely wrong in what they're saying. Um, and, you know, you can't say, we've heard the, this argument before too, that Liquor Isle is a thousand square feet. So now this is like 20,000 licenses. I mean, that, that's not true at all. This is, there's a, a need for this um, type of store. And in fact, this kind of store is well run. You know, the, um, you know, Ms. Hellman, you know, the alcohol addiction, certainly Total Wine is not in the business of encouraging, you know, addicts or, or looking to people, uh, you know, the less fortunate people and such. You know, they have much more control over that store than Liquor Isle ever did or these other surrounding ones that won't agree to give up nips. And it's nips and, you know, the 40 ounce, those are what you know, some of these folks are looking to buy and Total Wine is not, that, that that's not in their market. So they won't be going there um, to, to do that. Um, so I think, you know, Total Wine is a responsible and, and would be, you know, economically, you know, just a really addition to this location. Um, you know, and, and I really, you know, think you have to be careful about this opposition. You know, all of these, it's very easy to just say, you know, it's scare tactics that they're going to come in and put people out of business, which you're not even supposed to consider, but that did not happen in those six other communities. I mean, we really have the evidence that did not happen. So it's just scare tactics. And it's, uh, I think we've made a case clearly um, for public need in the common good. And it's unfortunate that the elected, you know, are, have voiced opposition, but, um, you know, I think they're listening to the wrong arguments, to be quite honest. And um, I think this would really be a boon for this area. I don't know if, um, Ed, did you have anything else to say? I think you've said it very nicely. Thank you, Attorney Farnsworth. Are there any further questions from the board? Okay. And as a reminder to folks, um, the record will remain open until the board votes tomorrow. So if you have additional testimony that you wish to provide, you can send that at any time before tomorrow morning to licensingboard at boston.gov. Okay. And we did submit our, our brief, you know, it's really summarizes with the legal arguments as well. So I, I think that's important to look at that. We have that with all of the exhibits. It's in the file as well. So thank you. 
Thank you. Danny, did you get the, uh, we, we also sent over a photo. Um, speaking of security, I was in Braintree yesterday taking photos and no one, no one stopped me or talked to me. Uh, but of the, the classroom that is being used as storage in Braintree, I want to make sure that that's entered in as evidence as well. We had emailed that over. That photo, yeah, it was emailed over during this hearing. We just got it. It will be added to the file and okay. shared with the board. Thank you. Thank you. Great. With that, if there's no further testimony, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. And we do need to give a second call to an item that was skipped earlier, um, back to number six to see if they are here. That is 142 Berkeley LLC, located at 142 Berkeley Street, holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license, petition to change the manager of the license business from Andrew White to Kelly McNally. Um, is there anybody present on behalf of the applicant? Yes, I am here, this is Kelly. Great, you may begin. Um, yeah, I just, um, I am, and unfortunately, Andrew White is no longer working with the company. So um, I'm the new general manager. So I just wanted to get the liquor license changed over to my name. Um, thanks for joining us, Kelly. Um, are you a citizen? Um, I am the general manager of the business. Okay, so we have four standard questions. We ask any manager of record that comes before us. Perfect. And I'll, I'll ask those four questions and you can answer yes or no. Okay, thank you. Okay, the first question is, are you a citizen? Yes. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board? Yes. So, uh, this board, the, law, uh, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol. Sorry. Yes. And do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? I do, yes. Okay, I don't have any questions. Commissioners, do you? Oh, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Those are all of the items before the board today. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.